So, welcome to uh, Cyber UK TV. I'm Chris Enso. I'm one of the deputy directors of the National Cyber Security Centre, responsible for uh, cyber growth. And it's my real great pleasure today to introduce you to Claire Rosso, the CEO of um, ISC Squared. Chris, right. thank you. It's great to be here. This is a fantastic event. I have had a great time. I've learned a lot already, and we're only about a half a day through. It's your first time at Cyber UK? It is my first time at Cyber UK. Very impressive. Very this is your first time at Belfast. And it's my first time in Belfast. So a lot of firsts Lots for me. Firsts. Lots, Lots of firsts. firsts. Well, welcome. It's Thank great you. that you've managed to come over. It's great welcome. to be here. So um, let's start with, uh, you know, you're a qualifications organization, yeah. do a lot of training. What do you see as the main barriers to entering the cybersecurity profession? Okay, well, I'll have to start with what it's not. It's not available jobs. Right. So 3.4 million unfilled positions in cybersecurity globally. We think in the UK, we may not exactly agree on the numbers. It's about 57,000 yeah. yeah. open positions. So plenty of jobs. What we see as the barriers are there aren't enough entry and junior level jobs. Right. And there probably could be and should be because most of the core work in cybersecurity can be done by entry and junior level positions professionals. We also, and I know you spend a lot of time on this too, we also need to gain some clarity on what are the right qualifications for yeah. what jobs and the work that's being done by UK Cybersecurity Council that we do through our research, I think is going to help illuminate for us, but that's a big barrier. And then I'd say the other barrier we see consistently around the globe is people who are doing the hiring have some bias built into their process. And the bias is really, if you don't have the same education and experience that I have, I am less likely to recruit you. And if I have recruited you, I'm less likely to advance you within our organization. So those are problems I need to get over. What do you think, so um, a lot of organizations will only recruit people with experience, but they have to get the experience somewhere. So would you see that as a barrier, the fact that they won't take on inexperienced people? So that is a huge barrier. The people won't take inexperienced people, but we're seeing that shift. I believe I've actually started to see that shift, especially with large employers over the past two years. Why? And what we're finding is people are starting to hire for the non-technical skills and the mindset or personality attributes that make people successful in cybersecurity. So they're looking for problem solvers lifelong learners, people who think critically, people who have good communication skill, can work both alone and in a team, yeah. um, good at project management. They are starting, we're starting to see people hire for that and then train for the technical. Okay, because that's new. I mean, I think- That's, you know, that's brand new. That is brand new, because every survey tends to say, you know, they're looking for experienced people and, and ultimately they have to put some skin in the game. Right, and they would prefer, everyone would prefer to have a CISSP and bring them in the door. Um, one of the things that we've done as an organization this past, over the past year is we introduced a new certification, certified in cybersecurity, that's actually designed to address that issue. So what we did was we worked with our constituency base, with employers from around the globe and said, what would someone need to be able to demonstrate at a capability level um, are the core cyber domains that would make you comfortable that they were trainable. And so, and thanks to the UK, you were a jumping off ground for us last year where we offered a um, hundred thousand, we called it a hundred thousand in the UK to try to, in, um, for free to offer training and education to encourage people to move into cybersecurity with no experience. And what interestingly we saw was that we were attracting more women you're right. And more minorities than we typically did. And so we actually have expanded that program to offering it to a million people around the globe. We have about 190,000 who have signed up, tens of thousands already in the UK. And I think we've certified about four or 5,000 already in the UK. And so that, again, that's somebody who's demonstrated that they have the capacity to be trained in our core domains of cybersecurity. And what sort of jobs do they go into? I think a very common thing you'd see them move into like working in a SOC. Right, yeah. Or working in the very, very interesting entry level roles. They're gonna be those people that do those core roles of patching yeah, critical yeah, yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna do a little bit of risk management work, a little bit of threat hunting work, but really those are the kind of roles we see them in. And they're also the roles that are critical to our cyber yeah. defenses. 
Yeah. You mentioned the UK Cybersecurity Council there. Yeah. Um, I'm interested. I mean, you're a global company. Um, is the UK doing something different with the council or, or is there models around the world that we could be looking to that do similar sorts of things? So I think the UK is leading in this space. What? Cybersecurity is new. Well, 35 yeah, yeah. years old, barely. Yeah. Um, and I, prior to cybersecurity, I worked with the accounting and finance profession, the chartered accountants and the CPAs, 150 years. They've been around forever. And so really what we're seeing with the UK Cybersecurity Council is leading across the globe. Nobody else is truly, except for a very limited basis, thinking about how do I license an individual? And uh, there's some good work being done. And I, you know, we're a founding member of the UK Cybersecurity Council. We participate in one of the licensing pilots. We're working through a lot, yeah. which is what you have to do to get it right. Yeah. So I'm encouraged at how it started. I think it's a, it's an interesting experiment, and I think I think it'll be successful. It would be an interesting model. I think that, that others may follow. And then so. so so for people wanting to thinking about moving into this profession, what do you think the future holds for them and, and the profession as a as a whole? Is it a bright future? Is it? Uh, cyber security. I had to. I came. I'm gonna go back to the profession I came out of when I was with accounting and finance. I had to tell people that 94% of all their jobs were going to be automated away. Uh, yeah. Not really a message you want to deliver. No. Not a message you want to deliver. We have this massive skills gap in cybersecurity. We're looking for 3.4 million now, and that doesn't even count that 95% of organizations with fewer than 100 people who have no information system security people at all, there's a lot of job security it's a very dynamic profession and it's only yeah. going to become more so. And I think what people will also appreciate, much like technology did over the past decade or two, cybersecurity is becoming more and more important within organizations. People yeah. are understanding the strategic value that information system security has to their organization's success. And that's a kind of nice position to be in. So my last question then, so okay. hopefully you'll make Cyber UK 24. Of course, I'm already on my calendar. If I knew the dates, it would be I'll there. I'll be interviewing you again. Okay. What for you would be a success for the next 12 months that you would say, you know, this has been a really great thing that I, that I says Greta's delivered? Okay. So in the past, since September of 2022, we have encourage over 200,000 people to join our organization as candidates, which means commit to careers in cybersecurity. We've certified approximately 16,000 in our Certified in Cybersecurity program. So I think a year from now, success would be seeing many of those people not just being certified, but moving into jobs in the profession and so that we're making an impact on that cybersecurity workforce gap. Claire, thank you very much for your time today and uh, I look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, I'll see you next year. Thanks for having me. Thank you.